Okay, hey guys, Tim here from Algonorm. Okay, so last time I went over making tick house drums, but today I'm going to be making some house bass. The kind of bass you might hear from Fisher or Chris Lay, Camel Fed, those kinds of guys. Um, bear in mind that tech house bass isn't really a thing. You can use a bass sound in pretty much any genre, but depending on the genre, you might write the pattern a bit differently. Um, basically for house or tech house, what we really want is just a, a warm, subby bass. It's a little bit melodic um, on a one bar loop. Now I love a good bass line. It's probably one of my favorite parts of writing a track. I think everyone should write their own bass lines and make their own patches. It's fine to browse presets for your melodic hooks and chords and pads and things, but I reckon it's better for defining your own sound as an artist. And actually, once you know what you're doing, it's actually easier just to make your own from scratch. So the plan here is to make 10 bass line patches and 10 audio loops um, that you can download and use however you want um, through the comments as part of this video. I'm gonna try about three different patches and cover a range of ideas and things you can try when making your own. And then I'll fade to black and make another seven. So you have 10 in total. Okay, so let's make some bass. All right, so before we begin, I'm just gonna get a beat going. Um, so we have something to make a bass line too. Um, so I'm just gonna use Atlas because it's really quick to get things going. I'm just gonna choose a map here called Machine Tech House. So this is just uh, three packs that I like for making this kind of music. We'll load that up. Uh, hit new kit. Do you have some sounds? Yep, so that's a good hat. I might lock that in. Um, Cool, let's get a clip, MIDI clip, house four, that should do. Uh, launch pad, what have you got? Pretty good, might just change that kick. Nah. Not bad, that's pretty good, we'll roll with that. Okay, so we're working at 124. Um, all right, so we're making bass. I'm gonna use Massive for this tutorial. Um, everyone's got Massive, so that should be okay. Um, Basically, the principles I'm going to be talking about today, you can apply to any synth. There's nothing really um, special about Massive here, um, but it's a bit of a workhorse, and I know my way around it. So let's get into it. So we'll go from new sound, start from scratch. Um, and for this first bass patch, we're just going to keep it real simple, a simple flat bass line. That's, um, that's kind of what I'll call it, um, without any um, envelope on the filter or anything. So let's rearrange the filters, though, because we will use them. So we'll put them into serial, dial that up. Put it to mix two. So now what's going to happen is the oscillator is going to go into the filter one, into filter two, and then after the master. Can we hear anything? Yes, we can. Just one simple saw. Now to get a really warm oscillator, I tend to use the pulse saw phase width modulator. Um, so this one here it still has a square and a saw. So if you work, if you look at the um, waveform here, on the hard hard right it's a saw wave. Hard left it's a square, um, but with the pulse width knob all the way to the right, it's actually phased the square right out to nothing. If you put it vertical, it's just a pure square again. So, saw, square. But if you use shift the width position, just away from the center somewhere, you can make it sound much warmer. We get the right octave here? Let's have a look. We'll see, we just need a filter on it. So we'll start with that, and then let's choose a filter. So, um, because we're not chucking an envelope on the filter, um, we'll probably choose quite a flat, uh, like a low slope filter, like two, like low pass two or daft. Um, because if we had an envelope on the filter, um, we can get away with having a, a steeper slope because we will be enveloping in some highs. But in this case, we're just going to keep the filter static, so we probably need a bit of um, a bit more warmth going on. So um, the shallower slope will mean some more highs will come through. So long story short, um, daft. Um, too much resonance. A little bit though, a little bit. That sounds, that sounds all right already. Dial it up a bit. Okay, so now let's just add a bit of, um, what can we do here? So check out some of these envelopes and some master stuff. So we'll go to voicing. So you better make sure this is actually on monophonic. By default, it's on polyphonic. So we just want a monophonic bass line. We don't want a chord like this. We just want uh, a single note at a time. Uh, sounds like glide is on by default. We don't want that. Okay, and then we're going to go to the envelopes. So number four is the default um, volume envelope. So we'll just pull that attack to zero and bring this level down. This is basically sustain. Um, it's a shame they don't just label it that way. So that will give it a bit more punch. Otherwise, it's just full on volume and then off. If we actually give it a little bit of a 50% like a sustain, you do get a bit of a punch in terms of volume. Um, 
cool. And we'll keep the release quite short for this one as well. All right, and okay, what can we do now to make it a bit warmer? So we'll chuck on a bit of distortion. Classic tube will do. You could try the other ones if you wanted to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. That's too much. Pull the drive back. Pull the drive back. Sounds pretty good. Okay. Okay, and just to get it sounding a bit more analog as well, we might add some vibrato. So um, by default, it's all set up. So I might actually turn it off and do it manually just so you can kind of understand what's going on. So this is going to cause the oscillators to kind of um, to modulate in terms of pitch a little, just a little bit, just like a real synth. We don't want it too much. So that's obviously way too much. Although you could get creative and do that if you wanted to. Um, it's about the right speed. So we'll dial it back to about where we can about to where we can barely hear it and then just pull it back a bit more so that would mean that the notes are all going to be slightly different which will make it sound that a little bit more organic and warm it's usually a good idea to do that to do that um we could have just turned up vibrato down in the little macro control area but it's good to do things manually sometimes um and yeah so what else we're going to do we're going to add some because we added some resonance sometimes um that can actually eat away at your lows because it kind of emphasizes the frequencies around the cutoff position. Um, so it could be a good idea to bring them back in, but we'll do that within an EQ post massive. So we'll go, uh, where is EQ8? Check that there. Um, oh, that's the wrong channel, that's Atlas. There we go. Um, okay, we'll just turn on two, that's fine. Bell curve, and we'll add some warmth first of all. So. Um, Warmth is around about for bass or for any sound is about 150 to 250 hertz. So if we just say we hit it in the middle, 200 hertz, dial it up. It's warmth, somewhere around there. A little bit too pure, a bit more warm, nice. Cool. And we want to get a bit of a stab in this as well. So we'll check on a compressor. So we use the um, Universal Audio plugins a lot. They sound great, real expensive, um, but they are really good. Um, so for this one, I'm going to use uh, low noise, the 1176 low noise. Okay, so essentially what we want is about, yeah, about where it is actually, about minus five to minus 10 dB reduction. Um, we'll keep it on four ratio, nothing too extreme. Um, so it looks like the input uh, level is about right. It's doing the right amount of gain reduction. Let's just check these settings. So attack, we kind of want, uh, we do want a bit of attack. We don't want it to be too fast um, or essentially too low of a value. Of a value. So for attack um, on this device, it's kind of weird, it's a bit backward. Turning it up to seven is actually lowering the um, attack um, time, which means you're gonna really eat into that transient. We kind of want some transient to come through before we start pushing the volume down. So we're trying to bring the transient out. Uh, so, we'll, I don't know, three is fine. We do want a fast release though. So again, in this case, um, the higher the number, the lower the value. So we'll keep it fast so that once it's been, once the key's let, when we let, that, once we let go of the key, um, the volume will come straight back to full again. And let's match the output volumes. So with it off, we'll way up at like, minus 3 dB, so we'll push that back up. Something like that. So with it on, snappy. With it off, the flabby. Yeah, that's the, that's the idea. Okay, so let's get a loop going. So what is our beat? It's actually pretty good. All right, so what key should we work in? Let's just do it in A. Um, so when you're writing a melody, we're gonna write like a, a essentially a one bar melody, so one bar loop for the bass line, but I'll do, I will do a four bar clip um, and with a little bit of variation on the end, but essentially it's four sets of one. Um, and then our choices for what to do here, well, we want something basically quite simple, not too melodic. We don't wanna do anything progressive because that starts becoming like deep house. Um, and we don't want anything, anything too wild on the keyboard as well, otherwise it's kind of more, the bass line becomes the, the melody of your song, a bit more like bass, bass house. And we just want something simple um, down the bottom. So um, we could either go on beat or off beat. So on beat would be like, 
that offbeat would be I'm leaving that first kick in there and then it's coming on the offbeat so it'd be like yeah. Yeah, do so um, and then the other question is do we start on a root note or do we start on another note um, so we could go um, on the root note can sometimes be a bit flat and boring um, so we can maybe try a third note first That's right, good. I might just go with that for the first loop. Yeah, all right. Let's give a bit of a play and see what we come up with. I think that'll do. All right, so can you record? Far. We'll just rein that in. Just let that area that area and loop it. Oh at the end. Alright, we'll quantize it. Mind you. So we need to sidechain that. I can hear one of those notes is kind of conflicting with the kick. So we'll get a compressor. Alright. Sidechain from Atlas. We're just gonna turn the EQ on because everything's coming out one channel, so I can't isolate the kick, but I kind of can if I use the um, filter section here to just basically detect the lows, which is essentially the kick. I'll turn the ratio up. Okay, I might just pull that cut off back a little bit. We'll just do a bit of tweaking. too bad not too bad okay let's record that um, so new audio channel we're going to come from atlas we're going to go monitor in let's set the audio outs to sends only because we don't want a duplicate of the audio hit record cool let's just check that Monitor to auto, sends to master. That sounds nice and warm, and it's a pretty good tech house bass line. Um, of course, you can do your own melody, um, maybe even a better one. Okay, so let's change that back to sends only. Uh, everything's all good to go. All right, so let's do another bass line, the second one, second of three. So we're going to get more advanced as we go. Um, turn that off. Plugins, massive. Native instruments. Um, right, second bass line. So we're going to stack two oscillators here. So let's start off by once again, new sound, serial, mix two, second oscillator up. We've got a saw wave, voicing to monophonic, oscillator to no glide. Um, so we don't want a saw wave, we want a square, a nice big fat square. That's going to be too pure. We'll chuck on a filter. So in this case, we're going to use low pass four. So we're going to also use some enveloping. So see how that just kind of low pass two is a bit warmer. Low pass four really cuts out a lot of those um, highs, um, but it's going to be good for what we're doing. Well, resonance is pretty high too. We don't really want to do that yet. Um, okay, so let's check out the envelopes. Master, set that to something normal. I'm going to go a bit longer in this case. Okay, and then we're going to dial in a envelope onto the filter. We'll get to the second oscillator in a sec. So envelope one, put it on filter one. Cool. Press the release so it kind of... Oh, where's our release? All right, that's too much. Something like that. Cool. That sounds pretty good. Um, second oscillator. So we're going to use, um, we've got a square wave up top. Let's turn this on um, and choose a different wave table. So here in the basic columns, you've kind of got um, basic column, you've got all the um, 
I feel all nice analog kind of waveforms. And as you kind of go along the columns, they get weirder and weirder. So over here, you've got stuff like um, vocal kind of sounding waveforms right up to like cicadas. So we don't want to be too weird. We just want something, something basic and warm. So one of these, probably saw two, they'll probably do the job. Um, we start in the middle. That already sounds pretty good. So we can just kind of wiggle this around. Kind of change the character a bit. And you can also might just dial it back a little bit as well in the amp. So it's definitely adding some character to that original um, oscillator. That's just too pure. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about key tracking. Um, the way Massive is set up is that here in this panel here, a key track filter. Um, the key tracking for the filter for the cutoff is pretty linear. So that means as you go up and down the keyboard, um, essentially behind the scenes, the cutoff knob is sort of moving with it um, and matching where you are on the keyboard so that things sound, um, so every note, the tone sounds the same. We can change that by attaching a macro, this little thing down here called KTR or key tracking. We can assign that to the filter and either make that more extreme or less extreme. So obviously by making it more extreme, what that's gonna mean is that as I go up the keyboard, the filter's gonna open up more, and then obviously the other way around, it's not. It's gonna, um, the tone's gonna to kind of sound the same as you move around the keyboard. Um, so that's something to consider. I don't, it's not necessarily a right or wrong thing, but generally I find if you're being quite melodic with the bass line, um, it can be quite handy to have a bit more key tracking. So as you go up, the notes really punch through. Um, in this case, for the kind of bass lines we're making, where they're quite sort of flat and subby, if we do want to add a higher note, we don't really want it to be this big, loud, punchy note. We just want it to be kind of muted. So we'll dial the key tracking back. So, so we'll just dial it back a little bit. It's just something to consider. Um, all right, so getting some more tone going on. Um, tricks for bass lines. Let's add in some noise. So down here in the noise section, we'll change this to bright. Um, the color is already full, so that's good. And it's up. Now you can't hear it because currently it's going into filter one. It's being filtered out. So what we want to do here is rearrange the filters actually. So we'll set this up. We'll basically use, um, we have one filter for the oscillators and one filter or no filter for the noise. Um, so we'll put this into parallel and we'll chuck the oscillators into filter one only. And we're gonna set, and this mix now becomes a mix between um, the two filters. So if we go to the top, this is essentially what we just had. We're just hearing everything coming out the, set, the first oscillator. As we go down the bottom, we're hearing things from the second oscillator. So if I put the noise to filter two, um, we hear just the noise. Just the oscillators. So we can dial in just a little bit by doing that. Like the tiniest amount. Or even, even less. You, can, you don't even necessarily want to be almost you want to kind of feel it, not necessarily hear it. Just gives a bit of character. Um, and then what we can do is if we chuck that through some kind of distortion, it'll make the noise sound quite cool as well. That's pretty cool. Um, sweet. Um, all right, so to get some more punch into this bass line as well, what we can do is we can layer in a kick drum. So it sounds extreme, but hold on. It's quite loud. Got that back. So let's find a kick drum. Uh, vengeance sound. Oh, we're already here. Vengeance, we'll just go deep house. Doesn't really matter what kick drum, but just one that has a decent transient. So what have we got? That's pretty good. Something with character. So we're going to group massive, command G, pop up in the chains. We'll drag that kick onto a second layer. Um, cool. Let's just solo that. Okay, so it's too low. So we'll chuck on a MIDI effect. We'll pitch that up quite a bit. Uh, was 12 like one octave. Still too low. We'll go up to where it kind of naturally was 24. Sweet. Um, we'll get a filter or an EQ on that. Um, EQ8, change this to high pass, cut it all out. So it's just the transient essentially we end up hearing. 
and then we will unsolo it. We've got both. Dial back a little bit. So with it on, sounds like that, nice and clicky and stabby. With it off, kind of flat. So this will help it punch through in the mix and sound like a really sharp, like stabby bass line if you're going for that kind of vibe. Um, it doesn't matter what key the kick is in because by the time you high pass out the, the frequencies, um, it's just noise. So you're basically adding a, a noisy transient. You can use any kick you want. You might actually just EQ out the ultra highs as well. So we're just getting a nice warm, nice warm click. Okay. Um, what else can we do? We can actually, that might be enough for this patch actually. So let's check on a compressor. Um, Universal Audio, this one will use a DBX160. Still quite a lot of that old transient, eh? All right. Um, once again, about 10 dBs reduction, so this is too much, so we'll bring that threshold back up. Cool, and there's basically no settings on this, so that makes things easy. We'll just make sure that the overall volume is about the same. Oh, that's actually compressing it quite a lot. Let's bring it up even more. Dial the output back a bit. Yep, that's making it sound punchy and nice. Okay, um, let's get a new beat and try and make a new bass loop. So Atlas, new beat, I'll unlock that. New kit, um, what have we got? Mm, okay. Nah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Picks quite long, might shorten it a little bit. Okay, so what was the first bass line we made? How did that sound? So that was in uh, A, and it was starting on the third, um, on the off beat. So let's try something different. We'll go on beat um, in a different key. I feel like we need to filter this down a little bit. It's just a bit too warm. Okay. Okay, so I might actually talk about something here as well. Uh, when you're writing melodies, um, especially for bass, I find um, a lot of people kind of stick to the scale. So let's say I'm going to work in D for this one. Um, and um, so there's obviously a minor scale for D, which is basically. Um, this note, I'll play it higher up so you can hear it. So it's D. It's actually off minus scale, but you can still use them. And I find them actually quite cool in bass lines because they add a sort of darkness. And you do hear it quite a lot without realizing it in songs, in like commercial songs. So it depends where you put it. You can kind of put it at the start of a melody or at the end. You have to be just be careful with how you use these off scale notes. Um, so say for example, you could chuck one at the end. So if I'd start in D, I, I could go. That sounds all good. Or you could start with it, you could go. Something like that. So a few off notes at the start and then kind of mostly the root note um, kind of works too. So I might try that actually um, starting on beat this time rather than off beat last time. So let's have a bit of a muck around so we come up with. Yeah, so I'm starting on the root note and just going up at the end because I kind of want a one bar loop. Um, let's record this. So, oh, it dawns on me. We probably need a side chain. So I'm just going to copy this from the first channel holding Alt. Sweet. Um, okay, recording. Starting on D. Yeah, 
that's actually better. So let's try that again. Cool. Well, hey, settle down. Um, let's quantize that. What have we got? Oh, I kind of missed that last bit up. It used to be kind of on the offbeat there. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, let's record that loop. So, I'm recording on. Uh, let's record to a second loop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Input from the second massive instrument rack because it has that kick. Look at those transients. Nice and punchy. Um, cool. Second baseline loop. Um, let's give that a listen. So we've got the first one. Simple and warm. Punchy, also warm. That's good. All right, so let's do another one. Third one, getting more complex. Okay. Um, massive. One solve that. Oh, we'll set that back to sins only. Cool. Native instruments. Oh, first order business as well. We'll get a new beat. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, we'll turn that channel off. Okay, new kits. Nah. Nah. Cool kick. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that head actually, it's got some character to it. Sweet, take out loop just like that. All right, message, bring it up. New sound. All right, let me just check my notes. What do we got going on here? Phase with modulation. So that's the other thing we can do to get um, this thing sounding really warm and dynamic. So most of the bass lines we've done so far, um, all the settings are kind of static. Um, but we can actually check on some LFOs so that the notes really change and stuff. So let's do that. Um, saw wave. We'll chuck this over to phase with modulated again. Check it over to square. Now what we want to do is actually add some modulation to this pulse width so it actually moves kind of like that. So we'll get the LFO. Um, we want the LFO not to restart every time I hit a note. So I'll turn that off, syncing off. And um, we'll turn the curve to sine wave only. And then we've got rate to consider. And we'll just put this on phase width. And so at the moment it's static. If we dial this right up. Okay, that's what it's going to kind of sound like. But we'll dial it way back. We're also too high. We've done A, we've done D. Let's do... We'll do F. Okay, so we need a filter on this one. So we'll do it kind of similar to last time. We'll do, let's mix it up. Let's use Scream. It's kind of an interesting one. Kind of adds some warmth even just by using that Scream knob. We'll put it to zero for now. Okay, some envelope. Oh, what we're doing, hold on. Let's change this to monophonic. Make sure that's at zero. Um, yep. Do something like that. Okay, dial it up. See the difference? Without any kind of modulation, it's quite flat. We can dial in some subtle modulation. Makes it sound nice and dynamic and moving and warm. Yeah. Real small amount. All right, that's not too bad. Um, okay, so and then what we want is um, we'll dial in another oscillator, but maybe an octave up. Well, actually, first of all, let's just see if maybe we want to actually mix a square and a saw wave here. Saw wave, square. 
square only. Yeah, I think somewhere in the middle, a mix of a square and a saw. And we will dial in another oc uh, oscillator, but this time we'll try an octave above. So turn that on. I want to put this to half amp for now. Let's pick another one. Rough math. So that's what it's adding. It's quite a weird harmonic content being added, but by the time you filter it out, it just ends up being fat. That sounds a little bit too pure still. Just add something. You could even go as far actually as modulating the wavetable position, but we won't do that in this case. All right, so for this one, we can add a bit of chorus. We'll try that. Um, we won't use distortion because we've got so much um, harmonic content anyway. Um, let's try chorus. Maybe we'll try ensemble. Nah, chorus is probably better. Dial the depth back a little bit. That sounds pretty good. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some EQ shaping. So before on the first patch, we used an EQ just to add warmth, but it doesn't have to stop there. You can actually use the EQ to really carve your own bass sound. Um, so maybe in this case, I'm going to actually remove some frequencies, add some others. Um, so I've added some lows around 80, actually pulling out. Oh yeah, it sounds interesting. Pulling out some of the mids around 350, 400. Almost sounds kind of resonant like that, but that really adds some kind of shape to it as well. That sounds pretty good. Okay, so getting more advanced. Um, one thing you can do as well, now that we've got a stereo spread, we can process the, the mids and the sides separately. So I'll show you a track. Um, filter. We're going to group it, we're going to open up the chain, and we're going to duplicate this chain. So what we essentially got is two chains. I'm going to rename the first one to low, Whoop, rename the other one to high. Um, so if we solo this, I'm going to filter out everything that's in the lows down to like, I don't know, 120. And in the highs, I'm going to high pass everything. So about the same. So now what we've essentially done is we've split the lows and the highs into separate ch um, channels. And then what we can do, because it's chorusing, it might be a good idea to actually uh, make the lows mono again. So we'll check on a utility on the lows and just dial the width to zero. So the lows are always in the center. And then for the highs, we can do the opposite. Well, maybe not 400%, but we can just increase the width a bit. And then from there, we have a, we have options. We can do all kinds of things. We can um, we can process the lows and the highs separately. So maybe we will, um, what could we try? We, let's try um, transient shaping the highs. So we'll go to Native Instruments. They have one called Transient Master. It's pretty good. Check it on that. Increase the attack. Add some punch. That's quite good. Um, might dial that back a bit now because it's a bit loud. Cool. We could also add some distortion to the highs as well. So maybe we'll use um, now. What's the good one? I think it's dirt. Check that out for the transient. So this will actually um, distort the transients a bit more as well because they'll be louder going into into dirt. So we got. Saturator, we'll just set this up to be parallel, we'll just use one, okay, A, only A, um, we'll just drive that a bit, maybe I'll solo it, we'll overdo it, and pull it back, sounds like halfway is all good. Cool, a bit loud. So this rack we've made is actually adding quite a 
a lot of character just by splitting the lows and highs and giving us a bit more control over what we want to do and getting creative with that base. Um, probably want to just take a comp chuck a compressor on the end of all that as well. Um, Universal Audio. Let's use the LA2. That'll be good. Boom. Minus 10 dBs. Yeah, looks about right. Um, as for volume. Okay, dial it up a bit. Cool. Is that everything? Yeah. Ah, oh, a bit of reverb. We could do a bit of reverb actually if you wanted to. Um, let's use uh, Valhalla. So just a bit. I might actually, we'll check the reverb on the um, highs as well. So we're not actually reverbing the lows. So let's go Valhalla room. We'll chuck this maybe in front of after the transient before the dirt. And bring this mix down real low. That has some character too. That can be done. Real low. Maybe I'll make the decay a bit shorter. Yeah. Yeah, and that's basically it. So there's some more advanced technique techniques. So let's record this and so what have we got for our two bass lines? We've got oh we need a new beat. Oh, that's right, that was our new beat. Okay, so we've got an offbeat note starting on an, um, an offbeat bass line starting on an, a different note on the scale. One starting on beat, but I'm um, starting on the root. Um, I don't know, I'll just wing it. So we're going to work in, first was an A, second was in D. Let's do it in F. It's actually probably almost too warm. Um, but we'll write the melody first, so let's have a look. Oh, sidechain, don't forget that. Definitely gonna want that. Alt drag. Cool. Start of the beat, please. Sounds pretty good. So that's Simon um, F. We're starting on. We're actually starting on D. Um, let's record it. So the first one didn't have that extra note at the end, which I think it needs. We had a gap in the first melody, so we'll keep this one a bit different. I'll quantize. Check the, the last note can be something different. We'll go up an octave, down two semitones. So it's basically the, um, the ten semitones up from the root. Um, I think is the sixth note in the scale. Seventh? Who knows? Who cares? Ah, too short. Cool. Um, just check the settings. Oh, so much character this is adding. Just start this cut off back a little bit. Cool. Um, let's record it. So from massive in record. Not too bad, not too bad. I'm into that bass line. All right, cool. So we've got three bass line patches here and three loops for the quick listen. Uh, Audio 2 Master. Um, 
nice little simple one. A little stabby one. And a much warmer, um, gruntier one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fade to black. I'm going to make another seven baseline patches just real quick in seven loops. Um, and then we'll, we can wrap it all up and we can give them to you. Just hold that thought. All right, cool. So I've made 10 bases here. We've got 10 base patches. So each one of these channels has a different base patch on it. Made it massive. Um, I realized actually the first three patches I made used a few other tools like Ableton tools or a few Native Instruments tools, which you might not have. So the first three patches might sound a bit different, but I've made sure the other seven um, are just using Massive and a compressor. So I'm sure you can figure that out. And we've got 10 audio loops. So let's go through them. So we've got a new beat. So from the top we had, oh, master. So that was our first simple one. Stabby one. Growly wide one. We've got a few other ones now. Made a bit of an 808 style one there for the ninth one. And a big fat one at the end. So there you go, that's 10 bases. Made a massive, 10 tech house bases. Um, you can take all these patches and all these loops, use them in your own music if you want. Just download them through the uh, comments or the blurb. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Thanks for watching.